real privilege for me to be able to speak to you today. Sam je velik privilegij, da vam lahko danes pregovorim. Especially remembering that you do not really know me. <laughs> Še posebno, ko razmišljam o tem, da me pravzaprav ne poznate. So, I just pray that Holy Spirit leads me and speaks to me and to you through me. <laughs> Molim, da me Sveti Duh vodi in da uh, me uporablja in da spregovori vam preko mene. Because we are just tools, useless tools, unless he uses us, right? Saj smo mi samo neuporabna orodja, če nas on ne uporablja. That's what the Bible tells us. To nam pravi Sveto pismo. And that's what I really believe. I am a useless tool unless he uses me. In tudi jaz verjamem, da sem neuporabna orodja, razen če na on uporablja. I was uh, listening to the Holy Spirit to guide me. Poslušala sem Svetega Duha in sem prosila za njegovo vodstvo. In the process of preparation for this conference. Ko sem se pripravljala na to konferenco. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, fortunately, I don't know. I don't know about you, but typically what happens to me is that I I get some insight into spiritual reality closer to the event than when I am really far away, yes? Sicer ne vem za vas, ampak jaz običajno dobim duhovni uvid v nekaj bliže, ko smo dogodko. That's what I, you know, I've been experienced for years in ministry. As I'm leading worship, I know which songs to sing. I mean, I'm sure like the day, two days before, not three weeks before. To se yeah? že dolga leta dogaja, že od začetka. Uh, ko bodim slovljenje, vem šele dva dni prej, katere pesmi bom pela, ne pa nekaj tednov naprej. Yes, spiritual reality is a mystery, right? Duhovna realnost je skrivnostna. It is a mystery. Je skrivnost. Uh, okay, so I know, I am convinced that Holy Spirit wants me to share, to talk to you about character. Prepričana sem, da me Sveti Duh vodi, naj vam spregovorim o karakterju, oziroma značaju. I really wanted to share my personal testimony and story of ministry with you, that what I was planning when I was in Poland. Ko sem bila na Polskem, sem že načrtovala, da bom z vami podelila svojo osebno pričevanje o služenju gospodu. I printed out hmm. my teachings, my, my lectures on this topic. Na to temo sem si že natisnila vse zapiske. But then I came here and the Holy Spirit started whispering in my ear, talk about character. Potem pa sem prišla sem in mi je Sveti Duh začel še petati, ne, govori o značaju, o karakterju. It is problematic for me as a woman to speak to um, men in majority. Zame kot žensko je nekoliko težko govoriti večinoma moškim. And leaders and pastors in particular. Ki so predvsem voditelji in pastori. So to me this this uh, session is a challenge obviously. Torej za me je ta čas, ki je pred nami velik izziv. I am a university professor, but sem pr- profesorica na univerzi. Teaching in church is different as you know. Ampak kot veste, učenje v crkvi je drugačno. And also in my country the it is still in some circles controversial for women to teach. Na Polskem je v nekaterih krogih še vedno zelo kontroverzno, da ženska uči. It's a paradox because it's not controversial for women to be professors and to teach at university. Kar pa je paradox, ker ni pa kontroverzno, da je ženska lahko profesorica na univerzi. Je pa problem v crkvi. So, but I will not uh, continue. <laughs> ne bom pa nadaljevala <laughs> v te smeri. So, I will just be obedient to Holy Spirit and share some of my thoughts inspired by him hopefully to bom poslušna svetemu duhu in upam da bom podelila nekaj uh, misli ki mih je on dal na srce on our character and the development of our character na temo našega značaja in razvoja našega značaja i apologize to the women and people who were yesterday because some of the thoughts just a small portion but i will have to repeat some thoughts okay opravičem so sem ženskam ki so se mi pridružile včeraj kaj te nekatere stvari bodo ponovno slišale so forgive me prepustite mi okay so i i noticed at least in poland and in the countries that we visit maybe slovenia is a different it is an exception that uh, the topic of character is not most popular in our uh, Christian uh, world. 
saj na Polskem in v nekaterih državah, ki sem jih obiskala, morda je Slovenija tukaj izjema, samo pozila, da pogovarjanje o značaju oziroma karakterju ni ravno priljubljeno. In teoriji, we know and we agree that it is an important aspect of our lives. V teoriji se sicer zavedamo, da je to pomemben vidik našega življenja. But in practice, ampak v praksi, we are obsessed with great numbers. Smo obsedeni z velikimi številkami. And we are fascinated by spectacular events, right? In fascinirajo nas veliki, spektakularni dogodki. And I have witnessed many passionate discussions about how to build church ministry, effective team and effective ministry. Bila sem priča številnim razgretim razpravam, kako zglediti učinkovite, velike ekipe, velike crkve. I haven't really witnessed passionate discussions about kindness, patience, Nisem pa bila priča razgretim razpravom o prijaznosti, o potrpežljivosti, o našem značaju, ki se mora spreminjati. Da moramo umreti samim sebi, čeprav to vrstno sporočilo slišimo v crkvi. Ampak still, the fact that something is not very popular does not change the fact that it's important, very important. Ampak dejstvo, da nekaj ni priljubljeno, ne spremeni dejstva, da to ni pomembno. Verjamem namreč, da je eden najbolj pomemben faktor, ki vpliva na kvaliteto našega krščanskega življenja in službe za Boga, je pravzaprav kvaliteta našega značaja. Do you agree with me? Ali se strinjate z mano? Well, whether it's controversial or not, I don't know, but I think it's more, it's a more decisive factor than God's calling. Ali je kontroverzno ali ne, sicer ne vem, ampak verjamem pa, da je bolj odločujoče kot Boži klic. Why do I say so? Zakaj pravim tako? Because I've seen many lives destroyed. People called into great ministries and yet destroyed their ministry and calling because of the weaknesses of their character. Ker sem videla mnogo življenj, ki so bila uničena, ko so bili ljudje poklicani v velike službe za Boga, pa vendar so potem uničili službo in sebe. It was not God's fault. To ni bila Božja krivda. It was not the lack of God's promises and prophecies. Ni bilo pomankanje Božjih obljub in njegovih prerog. It was not the lack of God's calling. Ni bilo pomankanje Božjega klica. It was the weaknesses of character. Bila pa je šipkost značaja. Ok, so I will recall the verse that you know very well from 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 19. Holding, yeah, 1 Timothy, sorry. Obrnila se bom v 1 Timotejevo pismo, 1 poglavje vrstica 19. Holding on to faith and a good conscience which some have rejected and so have suffered shipwreck with regard to the faith. Ohrani vero in dobro vest, nekateri so to zavrgli in v veri doživeli prodolom. I am really thrilled or scared by very direct relation between faith and good conscience. Sem navdušena in prestrašena ob enem med zelo tesno povezavo med vero in dobro vestjo. Good conscience is direct result of our choices, actions, behaviors. Dobra vest je neposreden odraz naših izber, naših odločitev. And our choices, actions, behavior are the manifestation of our character. Naše izbere in dejanja pa so pravzaprav manifestacija našega značaja. So that's why I see a very direct dependence between faith, good conscience, character. Zato vidim neposredno povezavo med vero, dobro vestjo in dejanji. So based on this sentence, this one sentence, glede na to, na ta en stavek, we can draw a conclusion that lahko pridemo do zaključka, we cannot sustain strong faith without faith clear, clean, good conscience. Da ne moremo obdržati dobre vere brez čiste, dobre vesti. Also, that there is no Christian spirituality without strong morality. In da ni kroščanske duhovnosti brez dobre in močne moralnosti. Do you agree with me? Ali se strinjate z mano? I am really scared when I think about it. 
Ja se res prestrašim, ko pomislim na to. There is no growth in our spirituality without growth in our morality. Ni rasti v naši duhovnosti brez rasti v naši moralnosti. Our morality is crucial whether we like it or not. Naša moralnost je ključna, pa naj, naj nam je to všeč ali pa ne. So spirituality and morality, they constitute a tandem. Torej duhovnost uh, in moralnost sta v tandemu, sta v zelo like two sides of the same coin. Sta dve strani istega kovanca. So, um, that's why I do believe that it's worth concentrating on the quality of our character. Zato verjamem, da se je vredno osredotočiti na dobro kvaliteto našega značaja. Because the, the price is really high. Kajti cena je zelo visoka. Anyways, um, I think that this is, whether we like it or not, Christianity is the directly connected with culture or is almost the, the product of the culture. Na nam je to všeč ali ne, kršćanstvo je neposredno povezano s kulturo, ali je celo produkt kulture. So the mentality of the world outside of church Torej, mentaliteta uh, ljudi izven crkve becomes part of our Christian mentality, whether we like it or not. These are the psychological and social processes that take place regardless of our sometimes even understanding. Postanejo del naše crkvene moralnosti, pa naj nam je to všeč ali ne. To so psihološki procesi. And what we see outside of church and in church as well kar vidimo izven crkve in tudi v crkvi is people who are um, very much egocentric so ljudje, ki so osredotočeni sami na se, so egocentrični focused on individual happiness, satisfaction se osredotočajo na svojo lastno zadovoljstvo, svojo srečo accomplishment of their personal goals in na dosego svojih lastnih ciljev uh, meeting their needs, satisfying their, their desires išče načina, kako ne zadovoljujo svoje lastne potrebe in želje, hrpenenja and uh, achieving goals regardless of the methods. In dosegajo cilje, ne glede na to, katero metodo morajo uporabiti. So success and effectiveness seem to be more important uspeh in učinkovitost sta bolj pomembna than righteousness, kot pravičnost, than ethics, kot etika, than morality, kot moralnost. Right. So, and it is understandable if, um, if we remember that the father of contemporary philosophy, we can say state of mind, Razum- Machiavelli. Razumljivo je, če razmišljamo, da oče moderne filozofije Machiavelli, I think you know this name. Verjetno poznate ko me. It was him who made this famous statement, the ends justify the means. On je ta, ki je um, naredil ta slaven stavek, um, konec uh, upravičuje um, Sredstvo. Sredstvo. The ends justify the means. Do you know this phrase? Yeah. To, uh, this is a very well known saying, right? To je znan stavek. But you know, it took for some reason it took me years to intentionally disagree with the statement. Ampak mnogo let sem se, uh, sem se upirala temu stavku, se nisem strinjela z njim. Because in the kingdom of God, the ends do not justify the means. Konec nam reč ne upravičaj sredstev. Even if God shows us the goal, Bog nam our pokaže calling, cilj, our promised land, naš klic, naše obljubljeno deželo, it is not the most important thing to get there. It is equally important how we get there, the way, the process, the path. Ni pomembno samo to, da pridemo do cilja, ampak tudi kako pridemo do tja, kakšne procese uporabljamo. And this is where our morality, ethics, principles come into play, right? In tu pridejo v igro naša moralnost, naša etičnost in naši principi. This is where we can either, you know, become a beautiful incense before the throne of God, Tukaj lahko postanemo lepota pred Božjim prostolom. Or ugly, stinking <laughs> creatures. Ali pa postanemo grda, smrtljiva bitja. As opposed to man, God is not so much concentrated 
on our achievements and deeds, although they are important as well. V nasprotnju s človekom se Bog ne osredotoča toliko na naše ambicije, čeprav vsa opet ne. He's much more interested in who we are deep inside. Veliko bolj ga zanima, kdo smo mi globoko v sebi. Let's have a look at this famous, famous verse. Poglejmo zelo znamo. On this day many will say, Lord, Lord, I am paraphrasing, because I don't have it in English, I just have it in Polish, sorry, but we know it. Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name, yes, on the final day? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we perform miracles, great miracles in your name? And then I will tell you them, I will tell them, I have never known you. Go away. Yeah, we know this scripture, right? Poznamo vrstice, ki pravijo, gospod, gospod, ma nismo prerokovali v tvojem imenu, ma nismo izganili demonov v tvojem imenu. In na ta dan jim bom rekel, pojdite stran od mene, ne poznam vas. And we as people are obsessed with spectacular events, aren't we? Mi kot ljudje pa smo obsedani spektakularnimi dogodki. When we think about church growth, ko pomislimo na crkveno rast, we think about prophecies. Razmišljamo o preroštvih. They are wonderful, we want prophecies, I'm not disagreeing with that. Preroštva so čudovita, potrebujemo jih. But let us think about it, be honest with ourselves, prophecies, healings, casting out demons. Ampak bodimo iskreni sami s seboj, preroštva, izganjanje demonov, ozdravljenja. Do we think about characters of our people and ourselves? No, no. Ali ob tem razmišljamo o značaju naših ljudi, samih sebe? Ne, kaj ne? We pay attention to what is visible. Osredotočamo se na to, kar je vidno. And God focuses on what is hidden deep inside of us. Bog pa se osredotoča na to, kar je globoko v nas, kar je skrito. And I've noticed that even if we dream of a great ministry, And we know because we are not dumb, we know that character is somehow connected with success in the ministry, right? Opazila sem, da ko razmišljamo o naših velikih službah za Boga, nismo neumni, tako da nekako vemo, da je značaj povezan z našo službo za Boga. We still treat character as a means to this end, great ministry. Pa še vedno razmišljamo o značaju kot samo enem izmed sredstev, da pridemo do velikega konca. Our character, our righteousness and integrity rarely is treated as an end in itself. Naš značaj in naša integriteta s tem se zelo redko ukvarjamo kot samim seboj. Do you agree with me? And for God it is of primary importance. Za Boga pa je to prioriteta. And really this is what we shared with people yesterday, yes, that If we really treat the spiritual growth of our ministry seriously, o tem smo se včeraj pogovarjali, če duhovno rast obravnavamo zelo resno, it's high time we started working hard on our individual character. Je zelo pomembno in je čas, da začnemo delati na svojem lastnem značaju. Not my husband's character, although he desperately needs to change. Ne na značaju mojega moža, čeprav se mora spremeniti. Zdravsti morala si. Not even the people that, you know, drive us mad in our churches. Ne smemo se niti osredotočati na ljudi v naših crkvah, ki nas pravljajo po pamet. But our personal, individual characters. Osredotočati pa se moramo na naša osebna, lastne značaje. Where to start? Kje naj začnemo? So this is the, one of my favorite Fascinating verses of the Bible, not so well known. Psalm 26. This is the psalm I couldn't recall yesterday. Those who were with me yesterday. You know, I am fascinated by it because I specialize in critical thinking, in the way humans think. Psalm 26 me resno dušuje, ker se ukvarjam s kritičnim razmišljanjem, kako ljudje razmišljajo. Reason. Kako ljudje iščejo razum. Draw conclusions. Kako prihajajo do zaključkov. Arrive at judgments. Kako pridajo do presojanja. Also intellectual cognitive traps that they fall into. Ukvarjam se tudi z intelektualnimi kognitivnimi pasmi, v katere padajo. And arrive at false conclusions, for example. In kako pridajo do napačnih zaključkov. So this is wonderful. Let's read first several lines. Vindicate me, Lord, Psalm 26, Vindicate me, Lord, 
for I have led a blameless life. Psalm 16:20 Gospod prisodi mi pravico za kaj hodi sem v svoji popolnosti. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. In sem Gospoda zaupal ne bom omahoval. Test me Lord and try me. Preskusi me Gospod in me skušaj. Examine my heart and my mind. Prečisti mi obisti in srce. For I have always been mindful of your unfailing love. Zakaj tvoja dobrota je pred mojimi očmi and have lived in reliance on your faithfulness. Hodil sem v tvoji zvestobi. Why do I love it? Zakaj so mi te vrstice tako všeč? Because it is, you know, at the first sight, it is not coherent. It is, it seems illogical. Na prvi pogled se to zdi nekoliko nelogično, ni dosledno. Because the guy, I think it was David or the psalmist, I'm not sure, sorry, I haven't checked. David. David. Okay. David, psalmist. My husband has PhD in theology. He knows Bible by heart. No, I, I took a look at this computer. Moj se to pismo na pamet. Je pa ne pogledal. So, you know, the guy, uh, David comes to God and he says, look at the second verse, I have led a blameless life. David pride pred Boga in poglejte. Yeah, this is his statement. I have led a blameless life. Živel sem prez hibno življenje. I have trusted in the Lord and I have not faltered. Zaupal sem v Gospoda. So he is aware of the, I would say, integrity and righteousness and faithfulness of his actions and behaviors, right? Zaveda se svoje integritete in svoje pravičnosti in kako hodi z Gospodom. This is, this is David's perception of his life. Recent experience, let's say. To je Davidova perspektiva na njegovo življenje, nedavne izkušnje. And yet. Pa vendar. And yet. Pa vendar. He says, vindicate me, Lord. Pravi, prisodi mi pravico, gospod. Then he says, after saying, I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered, he says, right after that, he says, test me, Lord, and try me. Takoj potem, ko pravi, zaupal sem v gospoda, bil sem popolnil, pravi, preizkusi me, gospod, skušaj me. And he says, examine my heart and my mind. Prečisti mi obisti in srce. Yeah, it seems illogical. He says, you know, I haven't done anything wrong. Zdi se nelogično pravi, nič nisem narobe naredil. Vindicate me. Prisodi mi pravico. I have trusted in you, but you examine my heart. Zaupam sem vatem, pa tako prišči moje srce. There is some kind of contradiction here. Tukaj nekakšno naspotovanje, kaj ne? Are there such techniques appear in Bible often that things are, you know, seem to be illogical. Takšne nelogične stvari se v svetem pismo pojavljajo. Contradicting one another. Ko se stvari nasplatujajo. But after closer examination they obviously do not contradict each other. Ampak ko malo globlje pogledamo, seveda tu ni nasplatovan. So I am amazed by the, you know, the mind, the thinking of David. Impresionira me način, kako David razmišlja. Because it's a perfect example of a critical thinker. Kajte, to je popoln primer kritičnega misleca. You know, like contemporary research on human thinking. So researchers would say so. Kot moderno razmišljanje o človeškem razmišljanju. I didn't, in other words, paraphrase, I didn't do anything wrong, anything bad. S drugimi besedami, nič nisem naroba naredil, nič slabega. But I am aware of the limitations of my own understanding and my own knowing. Zavedam pa se omejitev svojega lastnega razumevanja in svojega lastnega vedenja. So by my human judgment, I am okay. Torej v svojem človeškem presojanju sem okay. But is it... Raz, dva, tri, še vje. But there is a higher, greater judge above me who sees everything. Je pa večji sodnik nad mano, ki vidi vse. The deepest depths of my heart and mind. Ki vidi globine mojega srca in mojega razmišljanja. So, you know, in this contemporary research on how humans think and reason, Torej, v modernem razmišljanju, kako človek razmišlja in kako deluje, You know, researchers are fascinated by those traps, that those tricks that our minds and perceptions play. Raziskovalce ne odvšujejo oziroma impresionirajo pasti našega uma. We draw conclusions, we see something, we draw conclusions that seem 100% true. Vidimo neke stvari in pridemo do zaključka, da je to stoprocentno res. And we say, I saw it, he did it. In potem rečemo, on je to naredil, videl sem. But this is our interpretation of some 
small element of greater reality. Je pa to samo naša interpretacija manjšega elementa naše realnosti. Or we say about ourselves. Aj pa rečemo za se. You know, I do not, you know, oh, how should I say? Yeah, we can say so. I do not envy anyone anything. Lahko rečemo, o, nikomu ničesar ne zavidam. No, no, I ne, don't. Ne, ne, res ne. But for some reason there is deep in us, yes? Ampak iz nekega razloga globoko v nas pa je zaviden. We are unable to see it, what is deep inside of us. Namreč nismo zmožni videti tega, kar je globoko v nas. Because we want to he- keep our self-esteem high. Saj želimo svojo samopodobo obdržati na visoki ravni. So in scientific academic research on how humans think, torej v znanstvenem akademskem raziskovanju o tem, kako ljudje razmišljajo, there is a concept of so-called self-deception. Je koncept tako imenovane uh, samo, samo, samo <laughs> zavajanja. Self-deception, you know, in Christianity we often talk about deception, right? V kreščanstvu veliko kot govorimo o zavajanju, kako nas je kodič zavajal. I know, yes, deceived by bad people or by the devil, yeah, it's... Ko nas zavajajo srabi ljudje ali kodič. And non-believing researchers say self-deception. Ampak neverojoči raziskovalci pravijo samo zavajanje. We deceive ourselves. Sami sebe zavedemo. Believing that we are better than we are in reality. In verjamemo, da smo boljši, kot smo v resnici. Believing that, you know, we know and understand him, her, ourselves. We know everything. Verujemo, da razumemo njega, njega, sami sebe vsebimo. And, you know, David comes to before the throne of God. In David pride pred Božji prestol. And he says, I know I did my best. In pravi, vem, da sem naredil svoje najboljše. Lord, I tried hard. Bog, res sem se potrudil. I love you, I am faithful to you. Ljubim te, zvest sem ti. And yet, pa vendar, vindicate me, Lord. Prisodi mi pravico. Test me, Lord. Preizkusi me, Gospod. Examine my heart and my mind. Preizči moje srce in moj um. This is the approach, I think the universal approach of every single Christian on earth. In to je univerzalen pristop vsakega posameznega kristijana na svetu. We try to be good people. Poskušamo biti dobri ljudje. We love the truth. Ljubimo resnico. We want to live in truth. Želimo živeti v resnici. But we pray to God. Ampak molimo k Bogu. Test me, Lord. Preizkusi me, Gospod. Examine my heart, examine my heart. Reveal what is wrong with me, please. Preizkusi moje srce, razodeni mi, kaj narobe z mano. So that I can change. Da se lahko spremenim. By your grace. Po tvoji milosti. Do you agree with me? Se strinjate z mano? I do believe. I want you to, if you were to remember one thing after this session, I, will, I really would like you to remember the first verses of Psalm 26 and read them. Če je le ena stvar, ki si jo boste odane zapomnili, bi rada, da so to prve vrstice Psalma 26. Preberite ga. Because I believe that they reveal, I would say, the universal condition of Christian mind. Verjamem namreč, da te vrstice razodenajo univerzalno stanje človeškega srca. You know, and I see the this verse is... Um, stands in alignment with Zaufaj Panu in ne polegaj na vlastnem zrozumenju. Trust in the Lord and do not depend on your own understanding, yeah. Te vrsti se gredo skupaj sa zaupajte Gospodu, ne zanašajte se na svoje lastno razumevanje. We you know we are rational creatures. God wants us to be rational to use our minds. Mi smo racionalna bitja in Bog želi da uporabljamo svoj um. And when I think about this verse I don't think God wants us to be just stupid and just believing, believing, believing. <laughs> Ko gledam te vrstice, verjamem, da Bog ne želi, da smo neumni in samo verjamemo, verjamemo, verjamemo. But the ultimate point of reference for me as an intelligent being ampak glavna, um, glavna točka za me kot za razmišljajoče bitje je is not my own understanding ne moje lastno razumevanje but God and His Word. Ampak Bog v njegovi besedi. Yeah, so even if I'm convinced I'm Right. Tudi, če sem prepričana, da imam prav, I come before his throne. Prihajam pred njegov prestor. And I say, God, I do not depend on my own understanding. In pravim, Bog, ne zanašam se na svoje lastno razumevanje. Okay. And now the next verse that is very well known. Naslednja vrsta, ki je zelo znana. should be a starting point or point of reference for us as we think about the improvement of our character. In bi morala biti referenca za nas, ko razmišljamo o svojem značaju. Is the fruit of the spirit is. So sadovi duha. 
Yeah, the word of God says you will know them by the fruit. Yeah? You will know them by the fruit. One of the most important fruits in Christian life is the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is nothing more, nothing less but our character. This is the fruit that Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Living God, wants to bear in us. So I will just mention love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Yeah, and sometimes I think we can, we can, we have the right, maybe, on the one hand the Bible says do not judge, on the other hand God wants us to look at the fruit. Na eni strani Sveto Pismo pravi ne sudite, po drugi strani pa Bog pravi pogledajte sadove. So do others, when they look at me, do they see joy, do they see peace, do they see patience, do they see kindness? Torej, ko me drugi pogledajo, ali vidijo ljubezen, ali vidijo mir, potrpežljivost, prijaznost? Do they see generosity? Ali vidijo radodarnost? Faithfulness and gentleness? Svestobo, nežnost? Is self-control visible in my life? Ali je samo obvladanje vidno v mojem življenju? You know, we can all ask these questions to ourselves right now. Vsi mi si lahko prav sedaj zastavimo vse to vprašanje. And we will know immediately if the fruit of the Spirit is big and rape in us. In takoj bomo vedeli, ali je sad Svetega Duha velik in zrel v nas. Or not. Ali ne? The next important thought concerning character. Naslednja pomembna stvar, kar se tiče značaja. The quality of our character is revealed. I will not finish in five minutes, I'm sorry. Ne bomo končali v petih minutah? I will not, I'm sorry. It's impossible. Yes. It's impossible, I'm sorry. Ne mogoče. I need 20 minutes. Še 20 minut bomo šli. I'm sorry, forgive me. Ni kave danes. You will not invite me anymore, okay. I will have to live with it. Pač ne bom se vrnila. I have just began, it is just an introduction. Še ne začeli smo, smo še ne pri vodu. That's what I did on one academic conference. To sem enkrat naredila na znanstveni konferenci. I did introduction and it took me 25 minutes. And I had 5 minutes left. Samo v vod sem naredila v 25 minutah in ostalo mi je še 5 minut. The worst part. The worst presentation ever of of mine. Moja najstrašnija predstavitev vseh časov. I just and everyone was like, oh, what will she say? And then five minutes later, I'm sorry, I cannot say anything. Vsi so čakali, kaj bo se daj rekla. Samo še pet minut ni čas, ne moram reči. During coffee break, everyone was what 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 did you want to say? In vat kavo so me vsi čakali, kaj si potela reči? It was not a conscious strategy. Ni bila zavestna strategija. But it turned out okay. Ampa bilo je okay. You know, I was like a celebrity. Bila sem znala vse, bo vsi so me iskali. I don't like celebrities, by the way. Pa ne maram znanih ljudi. No, I do speak. Oh, it's good that I have some. So da bomo govorili naprej? Okay. Critical circumstances reveal the quality of our character. Kritične okolišči ne razodeljajo nas značaj. We heard trials and tribulations in our lives. Imamo preskušnje, imamo težke časa v naših življenjih. But the fact is, testo pa je, that they reveal the real quality of our character. Da te okolišči ne razkrijajo pravo kvaliteto našega značaja. Sometimes they reveal our character to others. Časih razodeljajo nas značaj drugim. But most of all to ourselves. Ampak po večini pa nam samim. Epictet, one of the ancient philosophers, said. Epictet, yes, I mean. And he said, circumstances do not create a man. He said that the occult is not the story of a man. Circumstances reveal a man to himself. And the occult is not the story of a man to himself. It seems to us very often that we are this or that. Velikokrat se nam zdi, da smo mi to ali ono. 
We judge others based on their behavior in some critical circumstances. Druge presujemo glede na njihovo obnašanje v nekih kritičnih okoliščinah. And we say, well, I would do this, I would do that, I wouldn't behave like this. In rečemo, jaz bi naredil to, pa naredil bi tisto, pa ne bi se tako le obnašal. When in reality, v resnici pa, in the critical circumstances, v kritičnih okoliščinah, when we are on the verge, ko smo na robu, when our interest is at risk, ko je nekaj, kar nas zanima, oziroma kaj ima naša, when our self-esteem is at risk, je v tveganju, ko je naša samo podoba v tveganju, we can really surprise ourselves, lahko sami sebe presenitimo, not necessarily positively, in ne nujno na pozitivan način. Based on my experience in my ministry, in our ministry, I know today, glede na moje izkušnje v najni službi za Boga, that God allows some very difficult lessons, uncomfortable situations and circumstances in our lives, danes vem, da Bog dopusti zelo taške situacije in neprijetne okoliščine v naših življenjih, to teach us something important. In to zato, da bi nas naučil nekaj pomembnega. To help us understand who we are deep inside. Da bi nam pomagal razumeti, kdo smo mi globoko v sebi. And shape our characters. In da bi da bi se nas načaj oblikoval. And prepare us for the next chapter of our life and ministry. Da bi nas Bog pripravil na naslednje poglavje našega življenja in naše službe za Boga. Okay. So now I will just would like to share some points concerning how to work in practical realm of our life. How to work on our characters. Rada bi podelila nekaj praktičnih točk, kako delati na svojem značaju. So the very first, it seems to me, phase is the awareness of what is going on in us. Kot prvo, zdi se mi, da... Understanding of what is really going on in us, in our lives. Galatians chapter 5. Torej, da se zavedamo, kaj se dogaja v naših življenjih, Galačani 5. You know, this is a really great... Excerpt from verse 16 to 25. We don't have to read everything. I will just focus on some um, sentences. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. This is the beginning, I think, of chapter. Oh, sorry, to think. Aha, vi ste na trenutku. Jaz, vi ste na trenutku. Sorry. Za nek svobodi, bratje. Le, da vam svoboda ne bo predveza za življenje po mesu, da me služite drug drugemu po ljubezni. 16, verse 16. So I say, walk by the spirit. 16. Pravim, torej, živite v duhu. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. In nikakor ne boste stregli po želenju mesa. And this is really, I will say, say critically important, the verse 17. In 17. vrstica je res pomembna. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit. Kaj ti meso si želi, kar je zoper duha. And the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. Duh pa, kar je zoper meso. They are in conflict with each other. Ta dva si namlečno spratujeta. So I would say this is some basic and universal state in which we live permanently. Jaz bi rekla, da je to neka osnovna in univerzalna, neko osnovno in univerzalno stanje, v katerem živimo. We as Christians, we are constantly torn apart. Mi kot kristijani smo vedno razdeljeni. We are influenced by opposing forces. Na nas vplivajo sile, ki nam nasprotujejo. Yes, spiritual spirit and flesh. Torej, duh in meso. So there is a constant warfare in our lives and minds. Torej, ne nehno se odvija bitka v našem umu in v naših življenjih. Do you agree with me? Zastavljate z mano? I feel, I know when there comes moments when I'm weaker. So trenutke, ko sem šipkejša. Because I haven't prayed for some, I didn't pray for some days. Ker nekaj dni že nisem molila. Yes, I didn't have time to pray and read the Bible. Nisem imela časa za molitev in brani sveta do pisma. And suddenly some temptation just falls on me. In nenado me neka skušnjava pade na me, ne pričakovano. And I'm struggling. In se borim. But but because I didn't focus strong enough on cherishing the spiritual woman in me. And because se nisem dovol osredočala da bi cenila duhovno ženo v meni. We are in the state of constant warfare. Smo v stanju ne nesne bitke med duhom in med nasom. And we have a serious enemy, the devil. In imamo resnega sovražnika, hudiča, who really wants to destroy 
our calling, our ministry, our lives. Ki res hoće uničiti naš klic, našu službu za Boga i našu življenje. To je resno. It is serious like hell. To je resno kot pekel. Do you agree? It is serious like hell. Je resno kot pekel. Je resnična bitka. Yeah. Our life is at risk. Naše življenje je v nevarnosti. So, obviously, you know, and then in uh, verse 19, we will not read it. We will not read this about all kinds of acts of flesh. In potem v 19. vrstici vsa možna dela mesa. But I want to emphasize this, this critically important aspect. The warfare is real. Ampak to, da je bitka resnična, to je kritičen aspekt, ki ga hočem izpostaviti. And then the final part of this excerpt is the fruit of the Spirit. In zadnji del tega izseka so sadovi duha. But the fruit of the Spirit. Sadovi duha. I would say beautiful contrast. Čudovito nasprotje oziroma kontrast. Yeah, God shows us our natural tendencies, our human nature. Bog nam pokaže naše naravno poželenje, naše človeško naravo. And he finishes with his ideal of our character. Zaključi pa svojim idealom našega značaja. You know, I love this definition. The definition is taken from so-called cultural pedagogika kulture, pedagogy of culture. That's how we call it in Polish. Torej, pedagogika kulture. And according to this, in this field, education or upbringing is defined pravi da ko da čas šolanja I really love it, listen translate it I really love this definition ta definicija mi je res pri srcu mi je res všeč raising uskajanje is lifting a man from the level of nature to the level of culture je postikovanje človeka um from the level of nature to the level of culture. Od nivoja narave do nivoja kulture. Life with God. Življenje s Bogom. By the Holy Spirit. Po svetem duhu. Is lifting us. Nas dviguje. From the level of our flesh. Od nivoja našega mesa. To the level of the Holy Spirit. Do nivoja svetega duha. And the standards of the kingdom of God. Amen. In do standard do Božega kraljestva. Amen. I would like also us to, you know, in, no, no, sorry, I will not, I have just 10 more minutes. Uh, so we'll based on my video. <laughs> 10 more minutes. I want to finish half past 10. I really think that we don't eat coffee that early. We have just drank coffee, right? So why don't we continue till 11? I'm just kidding, sorry. <laughs> yeah. The second, the second, my husband, you don't look at me like this because I'm getting nervous. Most of the comments are just going for a coffee. You go and drink this coffee. <laughs> Listen, the second universal principle, biblical principle. Drug universal and biblical principle. Honestly, I hate it. Tega pa se vražim. I hate it. Rizka se vražim. It was so painful. Ker je boleč. And it hurts like death. In boli kot smrt. The Bible says, unless the seed falls down and dies. Sveto pismo pravi, če seme ne pade v zemlji in umre. You know the verse. Poznate vrstica. Unless the seed falls down and dies. Če seme ne pade v zemlji in umre. It will not bring the fruit. Ne bo prinesel sadu. It will remain a single seed. Bo ostalo samo seme. But when it falls down and dies. Ko pa pade v zemlji in umre. It will multiply. Se bo razmnožilo. I know that in my Christian life and in my ministry, I will not avoid dying for myself. I have experienced dying in my life for some of my precious desires. And it was not a romantic process. It really hurt like death. Death is not romantic. Smrt ni romantična. Death is painful. Smrt je boleča. But God wants us to die. Ampak Bog hoče, da umremo. And He wants us to hurt. In hoče, da nas boli. He wants us to die for some of our plans. Hoče, da umremo v nekaterih svojih načasih. Die for some of our dreams. V nekaterih sanjah, ki jih imamo. Some of our longings and desires. V hrepenenih in željah, ki jih imamo. He wants us to die for our sins. On hoče, da umremo za svoje vrte, skušnjave. In boli kot smrt. 
The beautiful thing is that in the kingdom of God, dying is not the final destination. Čudovita stvar pa je da v Božem kraljestvu smrt ni končna destinacija. Because our God is the God of resurrection. Kaj je naš Bog, je Bog ustajanja. So after the pain of dying, ve po bolečini umiranja, He lifts you up. Te postigne to a new life, better life, better you, better version of you. V novo življenje, boljše življenje, boljšega tebe. We have to die. Moramo umreti. Because he wants us to multiply. Saj on želi pomnožiti. Think about Jesus. Pomislite na Jezusa. Before his death. Pred njegovo smrtjo. He did great things, right? Je delal čudovite stvari, kaj ne? But his activities were local. His influence was local. Ampak njegove aktivnosti in njegov vpliv je bil lokalni. He was healing, helping individuals. Posame z nikom je pomagal in postravljal. Tisti, ki so prišli mimo. And then he died. Potem pa je umrl and his influence in jego upliv from local became global ja šel od lokalnega na globalno it was not until he died do trenutka ko je umrl that his influence became global šel ta krat je jego upliv postal globalen inspiration for all of us ne bo to na vdih za vse nas amen amen one wise polish professor said and the law modern polski profesor je rekel you have to become something more postati moraš nekaj več something that will be greater than your own ego nekaj kar bo večje od tvojega lastnega ega and i believe it's you know compatible with the word of god in varjamem da je to kompatibilno z božjo besedo four more points and six more minutes imam še štiri točke in še minut Okay, point number three. He wants us to guard our thoughts. On želi da on želi voditi naše misli. He wants us to guard our thoughts. Osma, pardon, želi da varujemo svoje misli. To me, this is one of the most slippery areas of our lives because nobody else sees my thoughts but me. Zame to hide my thoughts from you. Zame to zelo spolsko področje življenja, ker ni če ne vidi mojih misli razen mene. Lahko ih skrijem pred tabo. And yet, my sin begins there in my thoughts in pa, my mind pa vendar se moj greh začne tukaj v mojih mislih self discipline self control in thinking samo disciplina in samo nadzor v razmišljanju it is really important je zelo pomemben it's written in the bible you submit each thought yeah piše v svetem pismu podredite vsako misel poddavajte každo mišl v poslušanstvo in polish do you understand polish yes a little submission <laughs> Bring each thought under the submission. Bring each thought under the submission. It's painful. It's painful. It's like going to the gym when you don't feel like doing it. Ja kako da bi šli v fitness, ko se vam to ne zdi, da bi počeli. But we do it, right? Pa vendar ljudi gredo. So many unbelievers are extremely self-disciplined. Toliko nevernikov je zelo samodisciplinirani. We should learn from them. Od njih bi se morali učiti. There are things we can learn from non-believers, I can tell you. Povem vam vsa stvari, ki se to ne učimo od nevernikov. You should avoid temptation. Na srednji princip morate se izgledati zgušnjavi. Do not pretend you are a hero and superhero. Ne pretvarjajte se, da ste super junaki. This is what my husband told me many years ago. To mi je moš rekel pred mnogimi leti. You are not going to win with some temptations. Z nekaterimi skušnjavami ne bo smagala. You just avoid them. Samo izogibaj se jih. You turn back. Obrni se stran. You don't even approach this situation because you will fail. Sploh se ne bližaj tej situaciji, ker ti bi se odletilo. You know what I'm talking about. In veste, o čem govorim. The next principle, just remember. Naslednje načelo, zapomnite si. The most slippery grounds for any minister. Najbor spolska tla za katerega božega, katerega koli božega sločavnika. Three G's in English. Gold, glory and girls. Yes? So tri je P-I, torej punce, pohleb in slavo. In English is three times G. I know it from one American preacher, I didn't discover that so. But really, Money, torej denar, sex, sex, and glory, yes. In slavo, se ima to da smo poznani. Being on stage, being in the spotlight. Da smo na odru, da smo počarameti. These are such slippery areas of our lives. To so za los pauska tla naši žulen. You know what I do when I feel weak and I feel it's stronger than me. Ko se počutim šipko in ko se mi zdi da je nekaj močnejšega nad mano. I just call on to God. Kličem Boga. 
then sometimes it's all I can do. In Chastik je to vse, kar lahko naredim. But we have to be aware. Ampak mi se moramo tega zavezati. We zavezati. have to be aware. You know, it is believed in education, in psychology, for example. Je verovanje v izobraževanju, na primer, v psihologiji. The, the, the more aware we are. Da bolj kot se zavedamo. The better we understand central, sen, certain processes. Bolje razumemo nekatere postopke, zame procese. The more capable we become of control bolj zmožni postajemo nadzora. Monitoring and navigating through difficulties and challenges. Tako gremo lahko skozi težke čase in izzive. The next point, I have three more minutes. Še tri minute, naslednja točka. Get involved in good works. Vključite se v dobra dela. This is what I said yesterday morning. To sem rekla včeraj zjutraj. That our character rests upon three pillars. Da nas značaj počiva na treh stebrih. Our temper. Uh, naš, naš These are inborn characteristics. To so značilnosti, s katerimi smo rojeni, ki so odvisne od naše genetike. Our environment and upbringing. Naše okolje, naše okoliščine in vzgajanje. So these are external circumstances. Torej, to so zunanje okoliščine. And the third pillar is in tretji steber je our own activities. Naše lastne aktivnosti. What we do, what we decide to do. Kaj mi delamo, kaj, kaj se odločimo, da bomo delali. And you know what research says? Sorry? What research Aha. says? In raziskave pravijo. That the most crucial out of three da je najbolj ključen od teh treh is the third one. Tretji steber. Our activity. Naše aktivnosti, naše dejanja. So, regardless of our temper and genes. Torej, ne glede na naš temperament, na naše, na našo genetiko. Regardless of our upbringing. Ne glede na našo vzgojo. What we do, what we decide to do, what we engage with. Kaj mi delamo, kar se mi odločimo, da bomo delali, kar se vključujemo. Shapes our character to the greatest extent. Do največje mere oblikuje naš značaj. Okay, so that's a good news. To je dobro, ja s temu pravim dobro. There is a hope for every one of us. Za vsakega izmed nas je upanje. With really bad characters. Tudi za zelo slabe zločaje. If you really want to. Če li želite. If you practice, if you try. Če se trudite, če poskušate. Plus we have a Holy Ghost. Imamo tudi Svetega Duha. You know, I, I have this saying that Holy Ghost is turbo do vadovanje z njeba. Imam izrek, da je Sveti Duh. You know, that, like the jets have this, what do we call it? Turbo doladovanje. Holy Spirit is turbo doladovanje. Yeah? Sveti Duh je turbo doladovanje? Yeah, turbo doladovanje. Yeah, so even non-believers say, if you want to, if you try hard, you can change. But yeah, we Christians, we want to, we try, and we have turbo doladovanje, Holy Spirit. Tudi uh, nevernik pravijo, če želiš, če poskušaš, ti bo uspelo. In tudi mi pravimo, če se trudimo, ampak imamo turbo doladovanje. The last point I would like to mention. Še zadnja točka. I have four more points, I think, but I will finish. It's half past. Imam sicer še štiri točke. Keep ampak, your ampak, ego on a short leash. Imejte svoj ego na kratki vrvici. Do try not to think too much too well about yourself. Ne razmišljajte preveč in ne razmišljajte predobro sami o sebi. Mm, try not to be... not fall into self-admiration. Ne, ne občudujte preveč samih sebe. Yes, it's so easy for us to be glad. I mean, we should be glad by what we, with what we do. Moramo biti veseli tega, kar delamo. But really, our ego is a trap. Ampak in naš itself. ego je pas samo po sebi. So, I try not to look for compliments. Torej, ne iščem komplimentov, poskušam. I try my self-esteem to come from within me. Poskušam, da moja samo podoba izhaja iz mene. I want just holy spirit. You know, I keep repeating myself uh, what I started with. Ponavljam se s tem, s čimer sem začela. I really believe I'm a useless tool. Res verjamem, da sem neuporabna pologija. Unless he uses me. Razen, če me on uporabi. And I think it's better. In jaz mislim, da je bolje. Even if I don't think too well about myself, I think it's better than thinking too much and, you know, Če ne mislim preveč dobro o sebi, mislim, da je očevidno dobro, da razmišljam preveč. Yeah. And finally, last but not least, zadnji, ampak vendar ne... ne call up on Holy Spirit. Kličite Svetega Duha. But remember, He will not change us. On nas ne bo spremenil. He will not do this job for us. On ne bo pravil tega dela za nas. He will do this job with us. Ampak ga bo pravil skupaj z nami. With us. Z nami. 
We need to cooperate with Holy Spirit. Sodelovati moramo s Svetim Duhom. We have to be active. Moramo biti aktivni. Make difficult decisions. Sprejmajte teške odločitve. Die for ourselves. Umirajte sami sebi. Keep our ego on a short leash. Držite svoj ego na kratki vrvici. And then we will become better and better in by potem, the grace of God. In potem bomo po Božji milosti postali boljši in boljši. Amen. Amen. I apologize. Se opravičujem. <laughs>